Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. Let's examine the exploits and contemplate the incredible legacy of Canada's symbolic founder, Jacques Cartier, as we set the scene for the imminent arrival on the North American stage of Samuel de Champlain, better known in English as Champlain, the father of New France. Jacques Cartier was the first historical figure that ignited my young imagination and youthful spirit for literary adventure when I was seven years old at St. Ignatius Elementary School during Mrs. Latre's grade two classroom history lesson. Jacques Cartier lived in and sailed from northern France to the St. Lawrence River, visiting the Amerindian villages that would later become the sites of present-day Quebec City and Montreal. As the first European to encounter these sites and learning the local word Kanata, meaning a group of houses, for centuries Cartier was credited as the discoverer of Canada. The epic voyages of this titan of history have become legendary and are well worth a close study. Let's start this mariner's fascinating story in his place of birth, the port city of Saint-Malo, on the northeast coast of Brittany along the English Channel. The Roman Catholic countries of Western Europe furnished a market that made the perilous Atlantic Ocean voyage worthwhile, even if it were made just to reach the immensely rich fishing waters to gather the harvest of the sea instead of the spices and jewels of the Orient. Almost every year after John Cabot's historic 1497 voyage, an international mixture of fishing vessels could be seen on the offshore fisheries southeast of Newfoundland and east of Nova Scotia, Canada. Occasionally, such ships even cruised into the Gulf of St. Lawrence. At times, their crews encountered Amerindians along the shores who were willing to part with valuable furs in exchange for articles manufactured in Europe. When it was realized that only the wilds of an unexplored new world had been discovered, there was a spirit of disillusionment in Europe. Gradually, however, this feeling was replaced by a fresh interest in North America, for Spaniard adventurers were reported to be bringing home rich cargoes of gold and silver from the Caribbean and Mexico. Ten years after French monarch Francis I sent navigator Giovanni de Verrazzano on a voyage of reconnaissance overseas, he followed up by dispatching an expedition under skilled mariner Jacques Cartier. On his voyage of 1534, Cartier sailed a route that was for the most part already well known by captains of transatlantic fishing vessels. Cartier's voyage, however, was an official exploring expedition and its immediate result was a thorough report for the French king about the lands he had seen and the people he had met. He visited and named most of the important coasts on the Gulf of St. Lawrence and observed near Anticosti Island that he might be in the mouth of a great river. The modern cross of Gaspé is a monolithic granite monument installed in 1934 in the town of Gaspé, Quebec commissioned by the federal government to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of French explorers in Canada. The original cross of Gaspé was erected on July 24, 1534, overlooking the Bay of Gaspé by Jacques Cartier on his first exploration trip in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Planting the 30-foot wooden cross symbolized the ownership of the territory on behalf of the French king, Francis I. A wooden replica of the original cross bearing the words, Long live the king of France, was erected and still stands in France at Cartier's home port of Saint-Malo. Cartier returned to France in September 1534, sure that he had reached an Asian land. The modern country of Canada is one of the three nations this series is built upon. While a variety of theories have been postulated for the name of Canada, its origin is now accepted as coming from the Amerindian word Kanata, meaning village, settlement, cluster of dwellings, or collection of huts. In other words, an Amerindian community. 
when Jacques Cartier sailed up the St. Lawrence River on his second voyage to the New World in 1535, he had with him two sons of the Iroquoian chief, Donacona. Cartier had taken the young men to France after his first voyage to be trained as interpreters. As the Iroquoians noticed familiar landmarks, they called to Cartier that here was the Chemin de Canata, the route to the village. Against the background noise of sail snapping and rigging creaking, Cartier heard Chemin de Canada. Cartier documented the name Canada in his journal, describing the Kingdom of Canada and noting that the entrance to the river is the way to and the beginning of the route to Canada. He named Donnacona's territory the Province of Canada. The name Canada subsequently appeared on a 1547 world map denoting land north of the Gulf and River of St. Lawrence. The demonym Canadian or Canadien in French once referred exclusively to the indigenous groups who were native to the territory. Its use was extended over time to the colonial French settlers of the land and later the English settlers. Today, French language Canadians refer to themselves as Canadien Francais. By the way, Jacques Cartier is pronounced Jacques Cartier in my neck of the woods. The mighty St. Lawrence River is a large waterway in the middle latitudes of North America, flowing from Lake Ontario in a northeasterly direction into the world's largest estuary, the Gulf of St. Lawrence. The river connects the Great Lakes to the North Atlantic Ocean and forms the primary drainage outflow of the Great Lakes Basin. Its drainage area is the world's largest system of freshwater lakes. The basin covers parts of Ontario and Quebec in Canada, parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, and nearly the entirety of the state of Michigan in the United States. The river becomes tidal around Quebec City. The river traverses the Canadian provinces of Ontario and Quebec, as well as the state of New York, and is part of the international boundary between Canada and the USA. It also provides the basis for the commercial St. Lawrence Seaway. The Vikings explored the Gulf of St. Lawrence in the 11th century and were followed by 15th and early 16th century European fishermen and mariners, such as John Cabot. The first European explorer known to have sailed up the St. Lawrence River itself was Jacques Cartier. At that time, the land along the river was inhabited by the St. Lawrence Iroquoians. Because Cartier arrived in the estuary on St. Lawrence's feast day of August 10, 1535, he named it the Gulf of St. Lawrence. As mentioned, the St. Lawrence River is partly within the United States and as such is that country's sixth oldest surviving European place name. Until the early 17th century, the French used the name Rivière du Canada, or Canada River, to designate the St. Lawrence upstream to Montreal and the name Ottawa River after Montreal. The first known penetration of the interior of the continent through the St. Lawrence River Gateway took place in 1535 when Jacques Cartier returned as leader of a new expedition. Pressing upstream in three small vessels, he reached the Amerindian village of Stadacona, near the present site of the city of Quebec. A little more than 150 miles farther upstream, he reached the end of navigation at a large island in the river. Here, he found another Amerindian village, called Hachalaga, on the site of the present city of Montreal. From the height behind it, to which he gave the name Mont-Réal, better known today as Mont-Royal, or Mount Royal in English, he could see the foaming Lachine Rapids blocking the way to the upper waters of the St. Lawrence. At Stadacona, Cartier and his followers passed a bitter winter with the help of Chief Donacona. Many of his party died from cold and scurvy before he could set sail for France the following spring. St. Lawrence was one of the seven deacons of the city of Rome under Pope Sixtus II, who were martyred in the persecution of the Christians that the Roman Emperor Valerian ordered in 258 AD. 
Jacques Cartier is considered a national hero and icon across Canada, with many place names testifying to the importance of the great explorer. Tributes include Place Jacques Cartier in beautiful Old Montreal and the magnificent Jacques Cartier Bridge, built in 1936, which spans the waterway he navigated, the mighty St. Lawrence River. Donnacona is remembered by a town which now bears his name, on the north shore west of Quebec City, at the confluence of the St. Lawrence and the Jacques Cartier Rivers. In 1981, Donnacona was recognized as a National Historic Person by the Government of Canada. A plaque commemorating this is located at the Cartier Brebeuf National Historic Site, a charming open-air inner-city park that I visited in my youth. The site commemorates the second voyage of Jacques Cartier when he and his shipmates wintered near the Iroquoian village of Stadacona. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride.